Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Mike, and I'm here today with uh, Ms. Jess Kumi, who has recently um, become a subject for my Ehlers-Danlos Clinical Research Program at Boston University School of Medicine. So I'd like to welcome you. And um, for the audience, I, I'd like for you to explain to them what it's like to have this genetic disorder known as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, hypermobility type, and its impact on you, especially as a young child, um, having many of these medical problems that weren't appreciated to be related to the genetic disorder by your pediatrician. Okay, so I started feeling more symptoms about three years ago when I was in college. And I always really just attributed the pain to my anxiety. Um, I didn't know if it could be anything else. I kind of just thought my anxiety was causing all of this pain until I realized the pain wasn't going away. Um, I had to drop out of school. Um, and it's one of those things you kind of think that you'll be getting better quicker than you do. Um, I have not, I've been in pain for, yeah, about three years now. Um, I think the hardest thing is not remembering what it's like to not feel like this. I have a lot of back pain, shoulder pain, hip pain. It's all over. Um, it really limits a lot of my life right now. Um, but I feel optimistic knowing that I'm in better hands now and that I'm doing some things that I'm supposed to be doing. And so when you were um, a young child, did you have any sprains um, like in ankles or wrists? And, and, um, and did you ever kind of talk to your doctor about them? So I did track, I didn't do it for very long until I had to stop because of my knees. Um, I did go to physical therapy for that. I started walking for them and they said, oh, we see the problem. Um, I don't think they ever really found the problem. Um, I didn't continue track. Um, my knee pain did get better, but it was never related to anything other than I was running. Uh -huh. But again, it wasn't very long. Yeah. And, um, and, and did you ever sprain your ankles easily? Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's a classic sign because the, the increased laxity of the mm -hmm. ligaments, right? And, and all the joints. And, mm -hmm. and now, of course, that, that you're um, shoulders are so unstable, right? That you have to actually tape them to hold them in place. You know? Yeah. And what's really important, of course, is that um, physical therapy, I think, mm -hmm. is a very important part of this because to build up the muscle strength around the joints that are, are hyper extendable um, can help to stabilize them and hopefully mm -hmm. to, to decrease some of the discomfort that you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And do you flush easily? Yes, I've yeah. always, I get very irritated. I get very hot and red and anytime it's hot out. Yeah, and did you ever ask your doctor about it or to, to um, see if they could help you with it? No, again, I always just thought it was my anxiety being right. an anxious person, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's what's known as mast cell hypersensitivity. Right? Yeah. It's those immune cells that release histamine um, mm -hmm. that cause the dilation of your blood vessels and can make you look like you're embarrassed when in mm -hmm. fact it's just it's simply due to overactivity of these cells and it also makes you sweat profusely sometimes mm -hmm. and it's a classic sign. And mm -hmm. also when you get up quickly, feel lightheaded. Yes. Yeah, heart beating fast in your chest. Yes, I think um, you were the one that found a heart murmur. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And so the reason for that is um, that um, because when you're 
getting up quickly, the blood vessels can't constrict as quickly and the blood is flowing out of the head, the brain gets upset and starts to speed up your heart. So people feel lightheaded and, um, and can compensate by trying to get up less quickly um, so that they don't have that type of symptom. Often mm -hmm. doctors are telling patients that, well, you're just dehydrated, drink more water. But of course that's not gonna help at all. Yeah. Yeah. And what about, do your joints click? Yes, um, especially my knees. Um, my shoulders, it's almost like, it, it feels like my scapula is like rubbing against my rib cage almost. Yeah. 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 And so what I recommend is um, to be using braces um, on, on, on um, various joints to help to, to um, kind of stabilize them, um, mm -hmm. to reduce risk of destroying the articular cartilage and mm -hmm. decreasing risk for osteoarthritis, um, yeah. which can come earlier in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was certainly a pleasure um, to have you as part of our clinical research program. As you know, we got some DNA because we're hoping mm -hmm. if once we can raise enough funds to be able to do an analysis so we could try to figure out the genes that are responsible for this genetic disorder. Yeah, and that was one of the funny things because I did take the genetic test for Ehlers-Danlos and that came back negative, which was kind of even more confusing. Right, so that, and, and the then, reason for that is there is no genetic test for the most common form of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, hypermobility type, mm -hmm. which is why we're raising the funds for our program and, and doing the DNA analysis to try to um, help have a definitive diagnosis. But at the mm -hmm. moment, the only way to make this diagnosis is medically by being seen by a physician who understands this genetic disorder mm -hmm. and goes through a careful medical history, family history, and then a careful physical exam. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much again for your time. You. Yep, and we'll definitely stay in touch. Have a good yeah. day. Thank you, you too, thank okay. you. Bye. Bye-bye.